Hi everyone, hope you all are doing extremely well. So guys, we are back with the second question of our NEET code 150 question series, right? So it is day two and I believe the Josh is the same, right? So Josh is high and continuously make sure, keep this in your mind, we have to consecutively solve 150 questions. Our 150 days of 2024 is going to be devoted towards these 150 questions. This is something not just for you, but for me as well. So yeah, this is today's question. Before hoping up, if you are new to this channel, not subscribed, make sure to subscribe so you can stay updated with the coming videos. You can follow me on other platforms as well. The link is there in the description itself. So yeah, let's get started with the problem statement now. The problem says valid anagram. So given two strings S and T, return true if T is an anagram of S and false otherwise. Now, what is an anagram? An anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase, typically using all the original letters exactly once. Let me explain it again. So we are having two strings S and T. We have to determine if T is an anagram of S. What does it mean? Anagram they have defined. So let's say uh, we are having S value as anagram. This is the string given to us and T value as N-A-G-A-R-A-M. Right. So we have to check. We have to check if T given T, T is what? T is a string. If it is in, it is an anagram of S. How you will identify? So the thing is that on rearranging the words, on rearranging the characters, the letters of T. So these are the letters, right? Let me write here. N-A-G-A-R-A-M. These are the letters. So if on rearranging these letters, we can get, we can get if, uh, this S in return so if i will rearrange this rearrange this so we are having a we can first place a then we can place n another a is also we are having right then we can place g so we are having three a here right so we can use that and then we can use r a that one and m anagram so you can see from t we are able to achieve our original word means we are able to achieve s so we can say that t is an anagram of s if this is the case then what we have to do is that we have to return true if not, then we have to return false. So yeah, that's the problem. So I hope the problem, the statement is clear to you. For example, in this case, R-A-T-C-A-R. So this is not an anagram because no matter how much you try, R-A-R-A we have here, but here we have T, here we have C. So how, how would you rearrange? Not possible, right? So problem you are able to understand. Now comes how we will solve it, the approach part. So first thing is that, first thing is that, Let's say we are having R A T E, okay, and then we are having R A T. So if that is the case, one string is S is R A T E and T is R A T. So what do I actually mean here is that if the length of one string is smaller than that of other, right? Or you can say if the length of one string is greater than that of other, or you can say that if the length of both the strings is not equal. They are not equal. If the lengths are not equal, then obviously you cannot rearrange them, right? I mean, whatever arrangement you follow, they won't be um, an anagram. So in that case, in that case, we are hundred percent sure that we have to return false. So this is the first check that you can put that if the length of the both both strings are not equal, you have to return false. First thing done. Then comes this is done. Now what we can do? Uh, Maybe most of you must be thinking that what we can do is that let's sort both the strings. Let if we sort them in alphabetical order and we can just after post sorting, we can just check that if uh, let's say I have sorted this anagram, right? This anagram, if I will sort so in alphabetical order. So what we will get, we will get three A, we have A, 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 then we have G. Then we have M, then N. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Okay, R we miss. R we. Right. Similarly, if here this one also you will sort. So yeah, that would be in same sequence only. So just we have to sort. Like if we sort, and then we just check if the characters uh, on each index are equal. And if any such case occurs where they are not equal, means um, we have to return false. So I think most of you must be able to come up with this approach. And if not, if not, if anything you are not able to think of, 
no problem at all right this happens right when you're just starting it happens so no need to you know do the self-doubt thing okay i'm not able to think or whatever see the video follow the video fine so that is the thing but uh is this the only way we can do it i mean if there's some other approach that we can come up with so here uh when i was you know talking about this or i mean I, we were discussing this particular case rt or cr what was the case that here we are having t here we are having c so can the frequency of the characters can the frequency of the characters help us in this scenario i mean yes it can if the frequency of the characters in both the strings that we are having if it is equal then we can, we can i mean we don't have to give the arrangement itself we just have to check if the arrangement is possible or not that is the only case so just on the basis of frequency we can tell this thing that if the frequency of all the characters which we have s is equal to that of all the characters which we have in t it's a true it's a yes case right so that is the thing means frequency can help here so what first thing uh, uh, other approach that you can come up with that just store the frequency of all the characters in s first let's do so first character we come up with a so a would be the key then n would be the key then so a has already we have seen so it would be one again we are seeing uh, again it, it has occurred here right so it would be it would be two this time then 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 we have then we have then we have a n a is done g g new key we are seeing then r new key then a is already there three three then m m is again a uh, new key okay so for for this all this one 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 we have noted down this is for s now we will we'll basically have two hash maps so one for s and one for t so for t also we will we'll do the same thing first keys and then next key is a then g then again a means the occurrence would be twice then r uh, first time you are seeing then again a mean occurrence would be three then m so all of them has occurred only once so let me update one one right right so now what we can do is just we can check we would check so you can pick up any any strings let's say we we have chosen s so the first character we are seeing here is right or what we can do we have the hash map right we have the hash map so uh, you can uh, like what you'll be doing is that you'll be picking up one hash map let's say i i chose this one that, that is belonging to s so i will check that whatever the key is here what is the value associated with it that is c and then i will check the similar key see there can be a scenario that the similar key itself does not exist if the similar key itself does not exist for example here here if you will prepare the hash map so r is one a t they both has occurred once and here c is one a is one r is one so a uh, okay so let's say in hash map we have the entry so what we will see that r what is the value associated with it one and then before even checking up before even checking up the value associated with a similar key in the hash map that we have prepared for t just check that if even like this key also exists because this would be also the case right so here 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 if you will see here if you will see um t itself is not there right t itself is not here means means what means it is not an anagram right so that is what first thing is that key itself is not there other thing would be that the occurrence is not same so if any of these cases we have to return false so this is one possible way see as of now i'm, I'm just telling you the possible approaches uh coming to the coding part so we will code only that solution which would be the most optimized one so that is what problem solving is that you have to come up with the different possible ways you, you have to think okay this is how we can do and it's not a magical thing that would come because many of you must be thinking but why i'm not able to think in this way what is the reason by practicing by solving questions uh you will come up with this thing so it's not something magic is going there i have already solved this i have already seen this problem that's why i'm able to think or you know see how we'll be doing it other thing we can do is that uh instead of going with the hash map we can take see because here it is it is fixed that in the constant if you will see they have already specified that there would be all lowercase english characters means 26 characters would be there so the size we are already having so instead of going with the hash map what we can do and we need the we need what we need the frequency itself right so we can take the help of an 
character array as well. So we can take in character array. Uh, I mean the similar hash map approach that we discussed, right? So you can do is that taking two character arrays, taking two character arrays um, for S and T, we'll be storing the occurrence. Again, the same thing will happen. Let's say we have we we have seen A, right? So in uh, whatever array you will take, let's say we have our arrays temp. So A has occurred. The current character is A. Uh, if we are, it, okay, let me take A itself. A is the current character, is the current character, right? And just subtract it with, or let me, let me take, let's say current character is B, okay? So do this and just do plus plus. What I'm doing here is that B, first of all, see, this is the ASCII thing happening here, let me tell you. The minimum character would be A only, right? Lowercase characters only we are talking about, lowercase alphabetical characters we are talking about. So A, what is the ASCII value? 97. Uh, B, what is the ASCII value? 98. So on the zeroth, on the zeroth index, we'll be having the frequency of character A. That is how we are doing the mapping thing. On first index, see B minus F you will do. B is 98, A is 97. 98 minus 97, 1. So we are saying that, okay, we have seen B, do uh, what do plus plus here means frequency increased by one by default you know all the values associated in the if if you are taking an array so that would be zero 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 with all the index the zero value would be mapped by default so here we are increasing the value so that's how we will store the occurrence that's how we will store the occurrence and similar process we will do for ta as well so for that also we will take temp two temp two with each character we are iterating, we'll update the value with respect to the index. And, and once we have both our arrays ready, what we'll be doing is that uh, we'll be doing the comparison. We'll be doing the comparison that on a certain index, let's call it as i. ith index of uh, s and ith index of t. The value, whatever values there is, 0, 1, 2. If it is not equal, if it is not equal, if it is not equal it means what it means that it is not an anagram the, the occurrence is not the same we have to return false okay fine so this approach is also done so this approach is a good one right so can we do further optimization in that i mean if anything possible so is it possible that instead of taking two arrays why we are taking two arrays can't we just use one array itself i mean we are iterating we are going through the characters of array s and then we are storing the frequency. Frequency of whom? Frequency of the characters which has occurred in arrays. And how we are storing is, I have already told you that for a character x, we'll be subtracting its value. I mean, basically we are just, uh, you know, extracting that index value, which is which, which would be an integer, right? We are just extracting that index value, which would be an integer. So that's what we are doing. And we are just updating the frequency over there. So once we are done with this, once we are done with the, with the storation or what do we say of the frequency of character s next thing is that we'll hope on to t now instead i mean all we need is that all we need is that we have to determine if s if t is an anagram of s or not so see if they are n if they are anagram so the characters would be same it means what we can do whatever the character uh, the let's say let's say we have created let's say we have created like this zero on zero index we have the frequency one means a has occurred only one time and b we have two and c we have three zero one two we have one two three so if t is an anagram of s then for sure in t also the characters would be same so what we can do is that we will just go through t and with every index that we'll be getting uh will be instead of this time instead of incrementing here what we were doing we were incrementing we will decrement the value so let's say we have seen a so decrement the value, it would be zero. So every time when we will see, we'll keep on decrementing. One time we have seen, it would be one. Another time we have seen, it would be zero. Similarly for C, similarly for C, uh, one time if you, if you will see, so it would be two, then it would be one, then it would be zero. I'm assuming that characters are same in both S and T. So the resultant, the resultant array would be that all the values would be zero. If T is an anagram of S in that scenario. So, Yep, we are done. Now all we have to do is we have to iterate through this array, our 
and we just have to check that if at on any index the value is not zero if it is not zero means uh, if even if it is negative or positive means somewhere somewhere uh, we can determine that okay the number of characters are not same number of characters the frequency of the characters are not same or could be a possibility that whatever character here we have that is not existing in our in our in the s right so we can add the time itself as soon as this condition became true that the value is not zero we will return false otherwise we will keep on iterating in the loop and if this condition never became true it means that p is an anagram of s we will return true i hope you were able to understand right so yeah these were the approaches so let me let me code this one the most optimized approach so let me code this approach for you right so as said we'll be having an integer array let me call it as map or so what would be the size of this array you tell me we are having in the constant that we'll be having the string would be having it would be consisting of lower case english characters means 26 characters would be there so size is fixed so if someone asks you hey what is the space complexity of your solution then it is we are having fixed size only right 26 characters only would be there so we can say that would be um constant right so we go one would be the space complexity right so now first thing is that we have to iterate through the characters that we do have in s in s is string right so yeah and map what is the character at ith index take it take it minus a from it and yep we have to do the plus plus as well because we are storing the occurrence in the next iteration what we have to do we'll be iterating through we'll be iterating through t right we'll be iterating through t and i plus plus and this time we have to decrement decrement the value so map of the character t dot care at i take it minus a decrement 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 and yep so we are having our array ready so what we have to do is that we'll be going through each element of our array map and here we'll be checking that if element is not equal to zero means what means that we t is not an anagram of s so we have to return false we have to return false and if this condition never became true then yes it is an anagram so return true right so yeah in our arrays and hashing topic this was our second problem right so i hope you were able to understand and uh, I'll be providing the code link in the description so that would be there but i would suggest understand the approach first and the mistake that i have done always right you don't do it and what is that just by watching video and you are thinking that you'll be able to understand take a copy pen and whatever the approaches i suggest just do it okay yeah yeah in this way we can do just take a copy pen without taking a copy pen you won't be able to understand see you can understand but those for those i'm saying for those uh, this problem is a kind of new or you are not able to understand so do a dry run kind of thing right and then try to implement it never just hope on to the coding part directly before even thinking that okay what exactly we'll be doing is first you have to think then hope on to the code coding is easy even if you are doing the in your office task as well don't just directly hope on to the code i mean this advice has been given to me as well that's why i'm just sharing with you that don't just hope on to okay encoding how is it Coding should be the last step. First step should be that what should be the approach of solving the problem, right? So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. And guys, keep going. The thing is, you have to be consistent. And what I believe is that once you build up that consistency, you know, then you don't need any motivation. Then you don't need any push. So till twenty one days, if you have seen um, Kota Factory. सो इक्कीस दिन में कोई आदत लग जाती है इक्कीस दिन में डीएससी करने की आदत लगाते हैं एंड वील कीप ऑन डूइंग थैंक यू सो मच एवरी मन बाय बाय